Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Coinbase's stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or sell. Coinbase is a secure online platform for buying, selling, transferring, and storing digital currency. It also converts digital currency into and out of local currency. You could transfer your crypto into US dollars, Japanese yen, British pounds, or vice versa. You can convert your US dollars or Japanese yen or whatever your currency is into cryptocurrency. The company is headquartered in Wilmington, Delaware and was founded in 2012. It went public this year and currently trades on the NASDAQ, Frankfurt, Zetra, and Vienna stock exchanges. It's the largest cryptocurrency exchange in the US. The company is named after Coinbase transactions which are special transactions that introduce cryptocurrency into circulation. In October of 2012, the company launched the service to buy and sell Bitcoins through bank transfers. Its customers include 43 million individuals, 7,000 companies, and their customer base reaches over 100 countries. Out of the $782 billion worth of assets on the crypto market, 90 billion is held on the Coinbase platform. Let's get started with the model. This is a large cap company, 58 billion market cap. They're trading at 292 a share and they have 199 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So you can see they had negative free cash flow in 2019. Then it jumped way up to 2.5 billion in 2020. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. That was negative 30 million, then over 300 million in 2020. Revenue is a sales for the company and that more than doubled from half a billion to 1.3 billion. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales. Below that is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. And the difference between those two numbers is their gross profit, which was 1.1 billion in 2020. Below that is operating expenses. An example is their marketing expense. Then below that is operating income. That was negative in 2019, and it's over $400 million in 2020. Below that is other income and expenses. And the bottom line of the income statement is their net income and that was over $300 million in 2020, negative in 2019. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company generates from its operational business. You could think of operating cash flow as net income converted to cash because net income is your accounting profit and loss. It's not actual cash. Then you have capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant, and equipment. Operating cash flow minus CapEx gives you your free cash flow. And they already have a ton of free cash flow in 2020 at two and a half billion dollars. It was negative in 2019 because they had negative operating cash flow. Let's look at the capital structure. 1.5 billion of equity, 400 million of debt. They're 80% equity, 20% debt. And their net debt is negative 732 million. So they could pay off all the debt with the cash on their balance sheet and still have 732 million of cash left over. Their WAC is 13.75% and that's the discount rate we're gonna apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 64 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $52 billion. We divide that by 199 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 261. They're trading at 292, so they're trading at a 12% premium. It's a sell according to the model. Simply Wall Street values the company at $3.32. That seems really low. This might be an error in their database. Six analysts priced this stock in the past three months. The average price target was 480. The low was 285, the high was 650. This is a stock price since an IPO. They opened at a pretty high price, so the stock has gone down. But I'm sure the stock price will go up over time. This happened with me when I bought Facebook. I was down almost 50% of my investment within the first three months. But I held out several years, and I ended up selling for about a 400% return. 
This stock has gone down 11% since it IPO'd. Their low is 282, their high is 429. And the stock is trading below its 50 day moving average. This is a really liquid stock. 15 million to 26 million shares are traded each day. Of the 199 million shares outstanding, 41 million are on float and 7% are held by institutions. In the past week, this stock has gone down 15%, its industry has gone up 1%, and the market went up one-tenth of 1%. Analysts are forecasting their earnings to grow 22%, its industry to grow 10%, and the market to grow 17%. Analysts are forecasting their revenue to grow 22%, its industry 4%, and the market 10%. The founder of the company owns 20% of the stock, he's worth over $11 billion. The next biggest shareholder is Andreessen Horowitz, then Ribbit Management, the other founder of the company, and Unique Square Ventures. Let's look at their financial ratios. The average PE in the market is 33, the median is 22. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They're at 180.2, so investors are paying $180 for $1 of earnings. That's a really bad PE ratio. Price to sales is 45.5, a lot worse than the median and average. Price to book is stock price over book value per share, they're at 38.1, much worse than the median and average. And the way you calculate book value per share, it's equity over shares outstanding. Equity is assets minus liabilities on the balance sheet, and they have 1.5 billion of equity, 1.1 billion of tangible equity, since they have 450 million of intangible assets on their balance sheet. They have an amazing return on invested capital of 41%. Their ROE is 21%, which is really good. And their current ratio is 1.2. Their current assets are over $1 billion of cash and almost $4 billion of restricted cash. Restricted cash is cash set aside for a specific purpose. And they do seem to be well capitalized. They had $2.5 billion of free cash flow and almost $900 million of working capital. So they have over $3.3 billion of funding. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to companies in the same industry. I've done videos of 26 companies in the same industry as Coinbase. And if Coinbase has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in blue, they're better than the average. So they're worse than all the price multiples. They do have a good current ratio, but it's below average. They have a great ROE of 21%. Most of these companies have negative earnings, so they have negative ROE. They're lower than average in debt, and they are bigger than the average company. They're a pretty big company, 58 billion market cap. The average is 37 billion. Most companies in this industry do not pay a dividend. They use all their extra money to invest back into the business to grow it. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 12% discount. I definitely think this stock is a great long-term hold. I'm really interested in buying it. Even though I would never buy crypto, I may actually buy this stock. But you might have to wait a year or two before it goes up because it started out really high, the stock price. And they're already putting up great numbers, $2.5 billion of free cash flow and $1.3 billion of revenue. So I ranked their free cash flows 9 out of 10, their revenue 8 out of 10, and their ratios 4 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.